In this lesson, we will talk about objects, the introduction to object repository interface. We will talk in detail about one of the core concepts of QTP, that is, how QTP identify objects. We will also talk about the various types of ordinal identifiers we have in QTP. So, what is an object? You take any web-based application, it renders inside a browser. The browser contains a page or pages and these pages in turn contain elements like text boxes, drop downs and radio buttons. All these elements are independently known as objects in QTP. These objects get stored in something known as object repository during record time. A point to note here is that all objects are associated with some properties and methods. So what is the difference between a method and a property? In simple terms, properties store data for an object and methods are actions an object can be asked to perform. As an example, for a button, a property could be the label name that is found on top of it, while a method can be click which is the action that we can perform on it. Next let us see the introduction to object repository window. Let me show you what object repository looks like. To see the object repository, you can either click on this cylindrical icon button or you can go to resources, object repository. It can also be accessed through the shortcut key control plus R. So object repository has a toolbar at the top from which you can control various aspects of object repository. Just like any windows based application, below the toolbar we have various buttons that correspond to the options present in the toolbar above. On the left hand side, there are objects that QTP has stored during recording. On the right hand side, there are corresponding object properties. You need to remember that any object in QTP is identified with the help of a set of object properties during runtime. So what is the role of object repository in QTP? Object repository, in short we call it as OR, is like the brain of QTP. When we record a test, object get stored into the object repository with corresponding properties. When we run a test, QTP fetches the information about an object from object repository and then QTP matches this information with the object present in your application. That is how QTP is able to identify an object. You might wonder next, where do these properties come from? Why is QTP taking only these properties to identify a particular object? Why not more properties and why not less? These properties come from object identification that is present under tools option. The drop down on the left hand side has all the environments. The environments included here correspond to the add-ins that we had loaded when we first opened QTP. On the left hand side you can see the object classes associated with a particular environment. So when I selected ActiveX you can see the test object classes of ActiveX type. When I will select web then you can see web classes. Similarly for Visual Basic we have other classes and for standard Windows environment we have another set of classes. Now let us see how QTP identifies object at record time. For the sake of understanding we will select standard Windows environment. Every object can have mandatory properties and assistive properties associated with it. Mandatory properties are the properties that are always recorded when QTP learns an object. Assistive properties are optional properties. They are only recorded when QTP is unable to learn the object uniquely using mandatory properties alone. The combination of mandatory and assistive properties is known as learn description. Using this add remove button, you can choose to add remove properties listed under mandatory properties. Similarly, Using this add remove button, you can choose to add remove properties listed under assistive properties. The number on the left hand side signifies the sequence in which QTP will take the assistive property for object identification. 
As an example, say we had around three properties listed under assistive properties. So what QTP will do while trying to identify an object using rec uh, during record time is, it will first try to identify an object using native class and text property alone. In case it is not able to identify an object uniquely using these two property alone, then it will go to window ID property. In case this is also not sufficient, then QTP will move to a test text. If it is able to identify an object uniquely, then QTP will stop there and it will include a test text as part of the uh, learn description. In case this is also not sufficient, then QTP will go to property number 3. So I trust you got the answer to the previous question. Where does QTP pick the properties? It picks the properties from object identification and these are then recorded and stored into object repository. In case smart identification is enabled, then QTP learns some properties inside smart identification as well. We will see in detail about smart identification in the coming videos. How QTP identifies objects at runtime? At runtime, QTP identifies an object using learn description. In case QTP is unable to identify an object using learn description, then it tries to do it using smart identification, given that it was enabled during the record time. In case QTP is not able to identify an object even by using a smart identification, then it uses the combination of learn description and ordinal identifier. So the next question can be, what is an ordinal identifier? Assume for the time being, what will happen if two or more objects in your application have exactly the same learn description? So for example, say you have three web buttons in your application. Now these three web buttons have exactly the same mandatory properties. That is their HTML tag, name and type properties are matching with each other. So in that case, how will QTP be able to identify those three objects uniquely? What QTP will do in that case is, it will assign a unique number to each of those three buttons. That unique number, QTP calls it as ordinal identifier. Now there are two types of ordinal identifiers. One is the index ordinal identifier and the other one is the location ordinal identifier. Index ordinal identifier assigns the value based on the order in which the application appears within the source code. So when we talk about the web based application, we will have index ordinal identifier by default. If we are talking about the windows based application, then we will have location ordinal identifier by default. Here is an example of a windows based dialog box. This dialog box contains eight radio buttons. Assuming all mandatory and assistive property values are same for all the 8 radio buttons, then QTP will use location ordinal identifier and it will assign numeric values starting from 0, top to down and left to right. Once an ordinal identifier value gets recorded, it can be seen inside object repository. In case you wish to manually assign or edit ordinal identifier values, you can go to object repository and edit the values. So in case I would like to edit the location ordinal identifier value here, I'll go to object repository and I'll click on this button. From this place, I can change the values of ordinal identifier. It brings us to the end of this video. In the next lesson, we will talk about object repository in detail. In case you have any questions, do let me know.